Welcome to Christian Family Church International in Johannesburg. We're located right next to the city airport. This morning's message is going to help you understand how to keep unwanted thoughts out of your mind. Because the mind is the war zone where Satan tries to control your life. If he can control your thinking, he'll control your actions. If he can defeat you in your mind, he'll defeat you in your life. So listen carefully to how you can keep unwanted thoughts out of your mind. Welcome them, family. As I said, today's message is titled, Standing Against the Storm in Your Mind. The mind is the war zone. Satan is fighting to control your thoughts through fear, through financial worry, through doubt, through inferiority, through rejection, and many other negative thinking, he, many other negative thoughts. He tries to intimidate us and control our life. These thoughts, family, are not from God. They are not your own. They are from the devil. We are going to learn how to keep unwanted thoughts out of our mind this morning. And I'd like you to turn with me, please, to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15, reading from the New King James Translation. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. Now somebody said, Pastor Theo, Adam ate of that tree and did not die. How come God said, Thou shalt surely die, and he never died? Well, in the Hebrew, it says, In dying thou shalt die. And there's two deaths involved here. The first one is spiritual death, where the Spirit of God in the heart of Adam and Eve departed the spirit of life in the heart of Adam and Eve departed, and they were left existing outside of the spirit of God. No fellowship with God. Cut off. God is life. Outside of God, there is no life. And so they were living in or existing in spiritual death. The second death comes physically later on. Yes, Adam died the moment he ate that fruit, spiritually first. Genesis 3.1 Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And the serpent said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The serpent, Satan, who possessed the serpent, 
was listening to the conversation that God had with Adam. He knew exactly what God had said to Adam. So he says, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. Notice God said, to eat the fruit would bring death. And Satan said, to eat the fruit would benefit them. God said it would bring death. Satan said it would bring benefit. Satan still goes, still does the same thing today. He still tells people that sin is enjoyable and that there are no consequences today. God says, don't do this, don't do that. There are consequences. The devil says, there are none. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, notice this, she saw, she was looking at the tree. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. It was peeling. Look at that picture. I mean, ooh, what a beautiful, juicy apple. It's so pleasant to the eyes. Ooh. And a tree desirable to make one wise. Wow. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings to hide from the presence of God. At that moment, they entered into spiritual death. Satan used her thoughts and he used her imagination to entice her into sin. She thought about this forbidden fruit. She had it on her mind for several days looking at it, thinking about it, until a desire rose up for it. Then she ate. Notice the words she saw. Pleasant to the eyes. Desirable. Satan heard exactly what God said to Adam. Don't eat the fruit or you will die. Satan hates God. And Satan hates God's people. He hates God's creation. Satan has no authority to kill Adam or to kill Eve. He has no authority. He can't kill them. But all Satan had to do was to get Adam to kill himself. By disobeying God. Remember... Satan came to kill, to steal, and destroy. That's what Jesus said in John 10.10. 10. Satan does not want to go to hell alone. Satan is not trying to offer people a good life. He's trying to take them to hell. He wasn't interested in Eve enjoying the fruit. He wasn't say, Eve, I really think... You'll enjoy this fruit. I really believe it'll bless you, Eve. You know, I really mean that. I believe it to my heart that you'll be blessed if you eat this fruit. God is just a meanie. No, it wasn't about the enjoyment of the fruit. It was about destruction of Eve. Hello? You all gone home? We out there. Okay. He was lying to her about its benefits. We are in a war every day of our lives. And the danger zone is in the mind. If we can win in the mind, 
We can beat the circumstances. If we are defeated in the mind, we'll be defeated in life. Satan will never control you until he controls your thinking. He'll never get you to backslide or do anything that's wrong until he can control your thinking. The danger zone. The battlefield is in the mind. Satan is continually putting thoughts into our mind like machine gun bullets, trying to entice us to disobey the word of God. Satan has not changed his methods. He is still enticing people to eat forbidden fruit today. Do we have forbidden fruit today? And if we do, what is the forbidden fruit? I just want to touch briefly on a little bit of the forbidden fruit. I just want you to see the tree with its fruit <laughs> before we move on to how to solve this problem, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Say that the unrighteous will not go to heaven. The Bible said, do not be deceived, neither fornicators, that sex before marriage, nor adulterers, that sex when somebody is married and they have sex with somebody who's not their husband or wife. Sorry, idolaters, that's idol worshippers. We make idols out of money, we can make idols out of money, idolaters. Then adulterers, that's sex outside of marriage. Nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, that's anal sex which could happen between a man and woman. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, that's someone who mocks other people. That's why I don't like the idea when people tease each other all the time. Like you, get, you can overstep the mark and you can actually start saying things that are hurtful and then you get into trouble. It's not necessary. Revilers, someone who mocks other people, nor extortioners, that's a swindler, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Ephesians 5.11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Now all these unfruitful works of darkness are in most of our movies today. And so when we watch those, we're having fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, even though we might not be partaking. Now watch this, verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. Even shameful to talk about it. Now, some of the movies that we watch today, some of the videos, some of the TV programs, some of the radio talk shows and magazines, some of the internet, that some Christians are being entertained with are forbidden, filled with all sorts of things that God does not allow. And we all know that pornography is something that God does not allow. These things start controlling our thinking. Satan wants us to look at these things until our desire for them is greater than our desire to obey God. Satan is doing to many Christians today what he did to Eve 6,000 years ago, enticing them. They look at this forbidden fruit until they discard logic, until they abandon their faith, until they no longer care about the consequences of their sin. Fires of hell is no longer something they are worried about. Christians, Please, let us use some God-given common sense when we select our entertainment. The movie that has R on it doesn't mean it's a racing movie. <laughs> R is not for race. Think about the movie. Is this good preaching, Pastor Theo? God tells us clearly what we should be focusing our attention on in Philippians 4.8. Look at this, family. Finally, brethren, 
whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, whatever, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Think about these things. Now, not too many movies are made from these things. But the Bible tells us, if we meditate on those things, the next verse says that it will, you'll have peace in your heart and mind. Your mind will be stable. Clear thinking. Satan's message through much of our modern entertainment today is this, that the world is having a great time and that Christians are missing out. The world is enjoying all the forbidden fruit. Everybody's doing it. Join in the fun. It won't hurt you. There are no consequences. It's not true. Some of you and I have been down that road and we were rescued from that world. It doesn't satisfy. Only Jesus satisfies. People in that world have fear. They're lost. They're insecure. Lonely. They face, they're living in death and face the flames of hell. And the devil is their God. And then after all that, he'll reward them by dragging them into the flames of hell. Many who watch movies become infatuated by these film stars. If a film star were to walk onto this platform this morning, many Christians would start weeping and shouting and biting the nails and pulling their hair out. Yet most of these film stars are living lives that totally contradict God's word. They are eating much of the forbidden fruit that God tells us not to eat of. Even so, Christians want to dress like them, cut their hair like them, and be like them, and do the things they do. If you had to read up about these film stars, so many of them have destroyed lives. Their lives are a wreck. So many of them are in rehabilitation for drugs and alcohol. Divorced, remarried, divorced. They're lonely and lost and confused. And then they get come out of re rehab to make another movie and go back in. <laughs> and then Christians go, oh, my hero, if I could be like her, living in the rehab. Oh. This is Satan's plan to pull us away from God. All those movies are just fictitious nonsense. Hello? Let's get a grip on life, family. Paul the Apostle said, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Paul said, Follow me. He didn't say, Follow <laughs> James Bond. <laughs> 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 be imitators of me as I am of Christ the Bible says be imitators of God as dear children be imitators of God as dear children James 5 19 listen to what God says brethren and sisterin all of you here if anyone among you wanders from the truth, if anyone you, brethren or sisterin, wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns that brother who's now become a sinner from the error of his way 
He will save that soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So it is possible for a Christian to live a sinful life, determined not to ask God to forgive them, but determined to walk away from God, to enjoy their sin, to get to a place where they die spiritually, and then they can't get born again and again. See that? That's what the Bible tells us right here. The word death here in the Greek is thanatos. And the strong Hebrew Greek concordance says thanatos, it is as Adam died in the day of his disobedience. From life of God to life without God in death. So that is what a Christian can experience, what Adam experienced. If they persist in living a sinful life and not asking God to forgive them and come back and serve God. Now all of us will make a mistake. There's not one of us here in this room that will not make a mistake between now and next Sunday. Not one of us. And we'll have to say, sorry, Lord. I'm not talking about that, nor is the Bible. You can make a mistake and still go to heaven before you ask God to forgive you. You could die. Somebody said to me, what happens if I swear to somebody in the traffic books? He slams his brake on me and then I die. Well, I go to heaven. Of course you'll go to heaven, you dummy. <laughs> Got one brain cell or what? All of us have to die. The question is, where do you go when you die? Are you sure you will go to heaven? If you want to be sure, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Say this little prayer. Dear Jesus, please forgive me for my sin. Come into my heart. I declare you are the Lord of my life, and I'll live for you with all my heart from this day forward. If you said that prayer from your heart, he accepts you as his child, and we'll see you in heaven. God bless you. Coming up next time on Living Life at Christian Family Church. If our entertainment is filled with forbidden fruit, then we give Satan, we give Satan the legal right to put those unwanted thoughts in our mind. If I have thoughts in my mind and I'm partaking of all of that stuff, if I have those thoughts in my mind and I say, oh, I don't want to think that, the devil's going to say, yes, you do. You look at it all the time. I have legal right, therefore, to put it in your mind. To find out more about what God is doing in our church, visit our website at www.christianfamilychurchsa.com or visit us on Facebook and Twitter. If you're in the San Antonio area, please visit Christian Family Church. We are on the north side of the city on Loop 604 at the Bull Verde exit. Look for our big sign on the freeway. If you have children and you're looking for the most amazing children's church, we have it. If you have young people and you're looking for a vibrant youth ministry, we have that also. And if you're looking for dynamic praise and worship, ours is amazing. And then our women's ministry is incredible. In fact, whatever you're looking for, I'm sure we have something just for you. We can't wait to see you and meet you in church very soon. If you'd like to see the move of the Holy Spirit, the signs, wonders, miracles, look no further. Love you, can't wait to meet you. Now your one leg is a little longer than the other. Can you see that? Yeah. Did you know it was like that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well after the hip replacement, this long leg was actually five centimeters longer than my other leg. They, they pulled all the sciatic nerve, they stretched the muscles, everything, because of the wrong pin that they put into my hip. Then I went for a revision and after the revision, they fractured the femur, and then the pain just never went away. They All discovered right. that the sciatic nerve was damaged. All right, now just relax your legs, let them fall. Now watch the short leg grow. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, 
you, Jesus. I receive my gift of healing. I receive my gift of healing. There it is. <laughs> Sit down. Now you're going to feel that power go through your back down into your hips. So I receive it, Jesus. I receive it, Jesus. There it goes right now. All right, get up. Touch your toes, walk around. Oh, I'm speechless. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> you are invited to visit Christian Family Church, San Antonio, where Dr. Theo and Beverly are based. Come and experience the supernatural power of God, along with outstanding praise and worship and faith-building teaching from the Word of God. The church is located on Loop 1604 North at the Bulverde Exit. Look for the big sign, Christian Family Church. Our service times are Saturday night at 6 p.m., Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. We look forward to seeing you there. You are invited to visit Christian Family Church, San Antonio. You saved me, you saved me when I was feeling shipwrecked in the shadows of distress.